So again, thanks to the fact that the SAR is sensing the surface roughness, it is also used quite a lot for monitoring sea ice in the high latitude uh, waters, both in the northern hemisphere and in the southern hemisphere. And uh, detecting sea ice is in itself extremely important. Along the ice edge, there are fascinating processes that lead to a very strong uh, biological activity, which is still not fully understood. Uh, even during winter, in the presence of no light, there are significant amount of observations of bio rich biology activity. So uh, the ice edge is really a place where, where there are bio-optical conditions in the water that really uh, favor uh, uh, rich uh, ecosystems. And therefore, to find these ice edge continuously is done regularly from satellites. Uh, the synthetic aperture radar satellites, again because it's having such a fantastic resolution, gives us the possibility to detect individual sea ice flows, to track their motion, which is not just a straight line, they usually uh, rotate around due to tidal motions and inertial motions, and the more we can observe this and the more we can frequently observe this, the more we have an ability to not just take out the motion, but also explain the contributors to the total motion. The SAR is an enormously uh, important contributor to this. And also keep in mind that if you want to navigate in ice-covered seas, you need to know a little bit about where is it easy to go and where is it complicated to go. The SAR is the only sensing system from satellite that can do that. And we see over and over how it is practiced these days where the ice-breaking research vessels, when they go into the Arctic Ocean, they use continuous information from the SAR to find the easy way to go. So in future, you can imagine if we will see ship routing from Europe to Asia during summertime because of little ice in the Arctic Ocean, again, this system will be highly critical in order to make safely uh, opportunities to undertake this kind of operation.